Yeah, we'll be coming to, to the forum. We'll be doing, um, I'll be doing two things. We'll be primarily bringing the Dr. Grodbort's exhibition, uh, the exceptional exhibition, which we first premiered in Chengde in China. Boy, are we in for some good action. Until then, we'll be waiting with bated breath for the great feats of enterprise. Hong Kong is now going to be showing it at the cyber port, and I'm really excited to be able to bring that to uh, that part of the world and uh, see what everyone thinks of it. It's a huge exhibition. We'll be cramming it into quite a small space, but I think that's going to make it very exciting. It's 150 works of art. Well, it's, it's kind of a retro science fiction world, uh, Dr. Broadblatt's world, and it's, the images are painted uh, and presented in gilt ornate frames as if it's an antique exhibition of works. There are alien heads and ray guns and curios from this alternate science fiction world that I've created. And I think what it also does is it gives a glimpse into the making of uh, future entertainment products that we're working on. Like, uh, we, we'd love to be able to make the Broadbots world into a feature film, video game, etc. In the body of this exhibition, even though it's presented as an antique exhibition, uh, I think you kind of get a sense of the kind of creation of a world uh, and some of the uh, research and effort that goes into um, designing, you know, conceptually what a sci-fi or fantasy uh, universe can be. And then on top of that, of course, I'll be talking at the Expo about the film work that I do here at Weta. Uh, so some of that will be about the creation of the Dr. Grobert's world and how that's um, grown from very small beginnings. And other things like uh, how I work Peter on King Kong. And Neil Blomkamp on District 9 and some of the other uh, feature films. And the thought processes and everything that go into the, the feature films that we work on, especially from a design point of view. Okay. For me, I'm very art focused. Um, I'm, I'm into gadgets and toys and, and new technology, but um, to me it always comes back to the simple, um, I, simple process of creation and, uh, you know, and of um, making new ideas. And uh, really that's almost irrespective of technology. Technology is almost kind of the thing that's, that's in your way. Some of the new technology, of course, starts to um, make things uh, open up new possibilities. But um, really it comes down to the ideas and, uh, and that's what always inspires me is how, what is the world you want to make and how do you want to project that to people and um, the fun of creating it is the central thing. You know, you can never exactly know what technology is, where it's going to lead us. I mean, uh, a few years before the internet, I don't think anyone would have seen exactly where that was going to take society. Uh, and that's kind of the fun, right, of, of, of new technology. But I suppose the things that are uh, appealing to me at the moment, are, a lot of them are on the video game front and in the ways of interacting with video games. Metropolis is probably one of the first visionary epic, you know, science fiction films that really sort of holistically created a new world for people to dive into. But of course it's sort of, you know, it's stuck in time of being a, a very quaint now almost representation of what the future would be. And of course there are many other films, Avatar, District 9 and so on, that are doing much more modern takes on what the future and what technology could be doing. But for me, um, something like Metropolis is very interesting because it harkens back to classic ideas and I think for Grodbortz that's that's kind of intrinsic, uh, it has an intrinsic appeal to me. I love the sort of quaintness if you like, those visions because there's nothing restrained about them, they're incredibly bold, incredibly visionary, exciting, huge, you know, they're epic but the ideas just didn't pan out right, none of these things that we see in these films ever actually came true but that's what's appealing about science fiction to me and so that plays perfectly into Grodbortz. Grodbortz is about reveling in those old-fashioned ideas you know, of what science fiction was supposed to be. And I think there's something there that's just um, I know, instantly appealing because it's the sort of bedrock of, of pop culture that's all ingrained in us anyway so you kind of get it even if the rocket ships in Grodbortz or, in the, or the futuristic vehicles in the world of Metropolis don't appear like the ones in the real world you get what they're a metaphor for you know. So. You know, a million geniuses out there with great ideas and half the time it's they just don't have access to the right equipment or they're, or, uh, they're not in the right environment um, socially or socioeconomically. But the, the constant drive down of technology from, you know, the high end of, of what it, films and entertainment companies use into the hands of consumers is actually what really drives really interesting technological uh, and creative change. The Hong Kong film industry has such an incredible history and such a depth, I mean it draws upon um, Chinese culture and the many, many stories that are available there. So to finally have an opportunity to realise some of that 
in a more epic way than a way that you know modern technology allows you to do. It's very exciting. Something like Delph is a um, perfect place for people to get together and share ideas and be inspired. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, learn a lot from each other and uh, share in you know what the potential new cre uh, creative technologies that they're coming up with, what they can do. You know, it's just a a brilliant way for people to to learn from each other more than anything. Technology is incredibly important moving forward of the creative goal po of the technological goalposts is what we're all excited by, but ultimately we turn it all to stories and creating new worlds for people. And it's a perfect place to share ideas like that.